right now on five on your side at 10. Tonight, summer heat. Can heat alone keep your car from starting? We verify. A nice break from the stifling humidity right now. Why a shifting pattern brings weekend changes, then searing heat next week. And our top story tonight, the first probable case of monkeypox in St. Louis. I'm not surprised um, because, as you know, it's uh, been uh, spreading across the country. What health officials want you to know. After outbreaks across the country, the first possible case of monkeypox is on record in St. Louis. Good evening, I'm Mike Bush. And I'm Ann Allred. Today, the city's health director made that big announcement. Our Robert Townsend is live downtown outside the health department with what you need to know, Robert. And the health director says they're keeping a close eye on St. Louis's first potential monkeypox case. Now she tells me they don't want to scare people, rather educate them. The city of St. Louis Department of Health is reporting the city's first probable case of monkeypox. The city's health director believes the patient contracted monkeypox during recent travel out of state. An investigation shows that the individual has had minimal contact with the public and any potential close contacts have been notified. The monkeypox virus is part of the same family as smallpox. Some symptoms include fever, headache and body aches, exhaustion, and a rash that can look like pimples or blisters. The rash goes through different stages before healing completely, and the illness itself lasts two to four weeks. Health officials say monkeypox is primarily spread through person-to-person -person contact, such as kissing, cuddling, or sex. The virus can also spread through respiratory droplets. Monkeypox is rarely fatal. The first thing is to make sure that uh, the person who is infected is not putting other people at risk, so they need to be in essentially in isolation. Health officials also say there have been three previous monkeypox cases in Missouri and at least 800 known cases nationwide. Currently, there are two monkeypox vaccines, but they are in limited supply, according to the CDC. There are treatments, there are vaccines available, um, but the main thing is to, to make sure that we diagnose it as early as possible so that we can curb the transmission. And tonight, the health department is still awaiting confirmation on that likely monkeypox case from the CDC. We'll continue to follow it live downtown. Robert Townsend, five on your side. Tonight, the release of the surveillance video from the Uvalde school shooting that killed 19 children and two teachers. As the mother of a school aged child, I want to warn you, it is very hard to watch. Here's what you will not see. We are silencing the audio of gunfire and screams. You will not see video from inside the classroom. You will not see anyone get shot. We are showing the key parts that address how the shooter accessed the school and the police response. There have been numerous calls from government and law enforcement to release this video after the director of the Texas Department of Public Safety called this day a failure of law enforcement. Again, we warn you, it is difficult to watch. 1133 AM. You can see the armed gunman walking down the hall of Robb Elementary School. No one spots him or intercepts him. Then a little boy walking back from the bathroom sees the shooter, sees him enter the classroom, hears shots, and runs for his life. 11.36 a.m., three minutes later, police enter the school. More and more officers begin to arrive and spread out through the hallway. There is an exchange of gunfire and a retreat by the officers. Authorities have said the incident commander on the scene that day then began treating this like a barricaded subject, which required a slower, more methodical response instead of an active shooter response. The next clip is a time lapse over 45 minutes. You see more officers arrive, added protective gear, high-powered weapons arrive, tear gas canisters are brought in. During this 45-minute period, at 12.21 p.m., there is another short burst of gunfire from the classroom, and officers start to take steps down the hallway, but do not go into the classroom. It would be another half an hour before they went in. 12.50 p.m., officers enter the classroom, shoot, and kill the gunman. The time between when the gunman entered the classroom to the time he was killed was one hour and 17 minutes. The entire time, there were 911 calls coming in from that classroom saying, please help, and there's a gunman. An Alton woman is fighting for her life after being injured in a tour bus crash while on vacation in Jamaica.
And tonight, friends and family gathered at a Florissant church to pray for her return. Pepper Baker has an update from her loved ones on the efforts to bring her home. When you go on vacation, you're supposed to come back. So, you're supposed to just be enjoying yourself, not have to figure out life decisions. Tish Haynes' best friend, Yvonne Campbell, is fighting for her life. She FaceTimed Campbell's twin sister, Evelyn, in front of people who showed up to Shalom Church Tuesday evening to show their support. She has a head injury so that requires surgery, and what they literally told Evelyn was that um, in their country, people with those conditions, they let pass. Yvonne and Evelyn Campbell were in a serious accident in Jamaica while on vacation. The tour bus they were riding in was in a head-on crash. Yvonne's daughter and niece were also involved. Their older sister, Janelle Campbell, says Yvonne is currently on life support. We've had some hits where her, her, her kidneys were having some issues and BP was a little unstable. At one point, um, Gold stabilized her. They have been okayed her to transport, so she's scheduled to leave out. Um, tomorrow, they're supposed to, they're gonna be airlifting Vine home, thank God, because it has taken such a very long time. Yvonne's health insurance Insurance lapsed on July 1st, making the process to get her home extremely difficult. It should be easier in order to get her. Let's get her home, get her stabilized, get her the services she needs, and then let's address the back issue of her health of insurance, our payment. This shouldn't be where we're at now in 2022 at all. They raised enough money to get Campbell transported from Jamaica to Barnes Jewish Hospital. The next step is to get her twin sister Evelyn, her daughter, niece, and their two friends back home as well. But three of them remain in the hospital, including Vaughn. Another one has a broken hip and the other one is waist down paralyzed. Our goal is to bring everyone home. We're not leaving anybody in Jamaica. That's our goal. In Florissant, Pepper Baker, five on your side. Yvonne Campbell owns My Just Desserts in Alton, Illinois. The family is keeping the restaurant open and encourages visitors to stop by and support in Campbell's honor. A teen killed at Table Rock Lake over the weekend was a rising softball star. Kendall Johnson would have been a sophomore this fall at Parkway West. The Missouri Highway Patrol says she was killed in an area known as Breezy Point over the weekend. A pontoon boat drove into a group of swimmers. A 16-year-old boy from Baldwin was also hurt. Parkway West will have counselors on hand for students who need help coping with the tragedy. Banning sex in government buildings is a step closer to becoming a reality in St. Louis County. That after a councilman introduced that measure tonight. As Five on Your Side's Brent Solomon reports, that's not the only topic county leaders are taking up. Brent. It certainly isn't. County leaders decided tonight to create essentially a statement of support for those who choose to get an abortion, although they recognize it can't be done in Missouri. The vote to create that statement of support all boiled down to gender. The two male council members who were present tonight were the only ones to vote against it. That's Councilman Tim Fitch and Ernie Trakas. The statement says St. Louis County protects the fundamental liberties of residents and aims to protect their rights to make reproductive health decisions. It also says the county won't conduct surveillance to determine if an abortion has occurred. Those for and against the measure were passionate in their stance. And the people who most suffer from abortion bans aren't like the seven of us who can easily drive across the state line when our friends and family are in need of abortion services. It's the already suffering, already impoverished. The use of false narratives about abortion becoming illegal and other hyperbolic scare tactics weaving in a myriad of other issues will only serve to incite and expand the already deep divisions on this issue. Unfortunately, this resolution does just that. And one council member, Mark Harder, wasn't present to vote on that resolution. Councilman Fitch told me that statement of support is just ceremonial and really has little weight since Missouri banned abortions. Now, back to that other hot topic. Next week, county leaders will discuss whether to ban sex in government buildings. That after a video surfaced of the county executive's former chief of staff involved in a sex act in his office. We will follow next week's discussion and let you know when the council takes action. Crime in the city of St. Louis remains high, making headlines across the country, and the city's position for top cop has been open since last fall. But who can apply is now changing. Our Christine Byer sat down with the city's interim personnel director for his response to criticism that he is lowering the standard for a very important job. 
The city's personnel division conducted a nationwide search last fall for the city's next top cop, which left only two internal candidates to pick from. Mayor Tashara Jones said the two white men didn't reflect the diversity of the department and called for a redo. And this time, the pool of those eligible to become St. Louis's next chief of police is a lot deeper. Traditionally, only officers who have held the rank of captain or above for at least 10 years have been eligible to become the city's top cop. Interim Personnel Director John Moten has changed that. His office posted a job description which read, applicants must currently have at least 10 years of increasingly responsible professional policing experience, including five years of patrol operations, administrative or investigative responsibility at the rank of police commander or higher, or an equivalent combination of education, training, and experience. That has opened up the position to officers who hold the rank of lieutenant. The move drew criticism from the St. Louis Police Officers Association. The group's president, Jay Schroeder, says it's lowering standards. Interim Director Moten doesn't see it that way. We, we think that what we, what we have done best fits the description and the qualifications for what we want and what we're looking for. That doesn't mean that everyone applies will necessarily be the, 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 a finalist for the job, but it means that we have more to choose from. Moten told me Tuesday afternoon the deadline to apply for the job is July 31st. Coming up, is the summer sun draining your car battery? We verify. All kinds of excitement at the Missouri Botanical Gardens tonight. And it's not something that, that you'll see every day. Just how long the corpse flower will be in bloom. We're already looking ahead towards the weekend. I'll show you why you may need the umbrella. The January 6th committee held hearing number seven today. The committee highlighted a mid-December meeting with Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani and others. At that meeting, strategies for former President Trump to remain in office were discussed, including having the military seize voting machines. Also today, videotaped testimony from Trump White House counsel Pat Ciplione. Did I believe he should concede the election at a point in time? Yes, I did. January 6 participants also testified, saying the president knew groups, including the Proud Boys and Oath Keepers, came to the Capitol heavily armed. There is at least one more hearing to go. Next week, the committee will cover the three hours during which former President Trump refused to stop the violence. New tonight, a warning from the White House. COVID cases are on the rise. There are new subvariants of the Omicron strain, and they are highly contagious. BA4 and BA5 hit the U.S. this week. Experts say the subvariants could trigger another wave of hospitalizations. White House officials say they are working toward a second vaccine booster rollout for adults. We know cold weather is tough on our cars, but what about this summer heat? Brandon Lewis from our National Verify team looks into whether there are special precautions you need to take for your battery during extremely hot days. Ah, the sound of a car starting. We don't think much of it until one day we go to start the engine and nothing happens, making us feel, well, just like this. And if you're anything like me, this only happens when you're running late in the dead of winter. But for Verify viewers Mia and Julia, they're wondering if they should be concerned about dead batteries in the summer. So let's verify. Is the summer weather worse for car batteries than winter? Our sources are AAA, Jiffy Lube of Southern California, and Firestone. AAA says heat is the number one culprit of battery failure. It estimates drivers in the coldest parts of the U.S. will need to replace their batteries about every five years, but batteries in the warmest parts of the country will need replacement after about three and a half years. Jiffy Loop says heat is particularly tough on batteries because it can cause battery fluid to evaporate, which can lessen its ability to hold the charge over time. Firestone explains the evaporating fluid can also speed up the corrosion process. So yes, the summer weather is worse for car batteries than the winter. Since the damage happens slowly over time, your battery may not give out on you until months later at the most inopportune time. Firestone recommends parking in the shade or in a garage to help extend the life of your battery because it keeps your car cooler. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. What would you like us to verify? Send an email to verify at ksdk.com. Big news from the Missouri Botanical Garden. Right now, Luna the corpse flower is blooming. 
The bloom only lasts 12 to 36 hours, so if you want to get a whiff, you'd better head out there. The flower gets its name because it unleashes a foul odor when it blooms. The smell is often compared to rotting meat. A spokesperson says tomorrow morning or during the day may be the best time to see it. And it didn't take long for word to get out about the corpse flower. Check out this picture five on your side. Justina Coronel took about an hour ago. Look at that line wow. around the building. They don't have official numbers, but they think about 2,000 people showed up to smell it tonight. Mobot says it's filled to capacity and is turning away anyone not already in line right now. So try tomorrow. The Climatron reopens at 7 a.m. And if you just want that smell, just come on and visit the sports office. Oh! Not, not unlike that, is it, Scott? Frank's yeah. not even here to defend himself. smell vision for sure. And we don't have that, but there's your live picture looking over at the Botanical Garden tonight. They're still lined up. Of course, they've shut off the line for tonight. The Climatron will stay open. I think it's until midnight tonight or 11 o'clock tonight, but they've already cut the line off. So all those folks are heading in to get a glorious whiff of Luna before Luna closes and we have to wait a while longer. At least it's a great night to be standing outside of the Botanical Garden, right? The humidity levels, we watch them drop all day long. Yesterday we had dew points that were in the 70s. Today our dew points drop back into the 50s in St. Louis. Plus the clouds from this morning and those scattered showers, a few of them that were around. If you were lucky enough to get one, they went on to the south of St. Louis. Skies have been mainly clear. There's the sun setting looking down in Arnold tonight from our weather camera. 89 degrees. You're high. The average is 90, so 10 degrees cooler today than what it was yesterday, but it felt so much better with those dew points down into the 50s. So it's 79 right now. Dew points 59. You just can't beat these numbers. The breeze really light out of the northeast at three miles per hour. Some of our outlying areas tonight will slide back into the lower 60s, upper 60s in town. It's nice to get that break, right? Plenty of sunshine tomorrow. No rain chance. Temperatures and heat index probably staying in tandem since the humidity is not a problem for us, but it will be a toasty afternoon. Seasonable right around 90 degrees for the afternoon high in St. Louis, and it'll feel about like that. Now we do have some changes on the way coming into the weekend. Had a big ridge building here out west, and as we go into Saturday and Sunday, we're on that northeast periphery of this. So in other words, the jet stream's going up and it's kind of dipping a little bit. So until this ridge can get over us, you get little disturbances that come sliding down and they tend to bring with them some areas of showers and thunderstorms. Now, as the ridge builds over us heading into the middle of next week, it just brings more of the searing weather back to St. Louis. So we do think we have the chance of seeing scattered showers and thunderstorms, especially from Saturday night into Sunday. Sure, we're painting a lot of rain here with future cast. It's not going to be a washout kind of weekend. You know how Saturday we had our wet time and then it ended up being pretty nice later in the day. You're going to have some nice time in there this weekend, but there's no guarantee that you won't get a four to six hour period where we're really having to navigate around some showers and thunderstorms. And that time frame looks to be highest for the potential showers and storms Saturday night into Sunday. Between now and then, it's relatively quiet, a lot of sunshine, near 90 tomorrow, low 90s as we head into Thursday and Friday with the humidity coming back up. Once we get past that rain chance, here's your upper level ridge sitting over us for the end of next week. Temperatures by the middle and end of next week looks like upper 90s, close to 100. All right, Scott, thank you. And here is our handsome corpse flower. <laughs> From the smelly sports department, I understand. How about this? Albert and Nellie, the blues and David Perron, and a young girl saying, I'm better than the boys. Stick around, please. If you have a tip for the Five on Your Side I-Team, call us at 314-444-5231 or email fiveonyourside at ksdk.com. All calls and correspondence will be kept confidential. So if you want to win a division, you have to win a series against a good team once in a while. The Dodgers are not a good team. They're the best team in the National League. So let's see what happens this week. Nelly in the stands, and fittingly, it's hot in there. And speaking of hot, Albert, who hit one Sunday, almost won on Monday, hits another one tonight. Homer 685, 1 0 cards in the second. And after high fiving his teammates, he, of course, goes to Nelly. 
Fourth inning, it looks like the route is on. Nolan Arenado base hit. Dylan Carlson scores. It's six to one birds. Seventh inning, arguably the best relief moment of the season. Packy Naughton came on with the bases loaded, nobody out, and got Cody Bellinger to finish off the inning. Wow. Love seeing a productive Andrew Kisner. Three hits, three RBIs for the Cardinal catcher this evening. And the Cardinals brought in Giovanni Gallegos in the ninth. He gets the save. The Cardinals get their third victory in a row. The final was 7-2-6. My hockey philosophy has always been four words. In Doug, we trust. That is, I believe Doug Armstrong is the smartest guy in the room, and he doesn't make many mistakes. NHL free agency begins at 11 a.m. tomorrow. And the questions are, does David Perron leave the team? Is Vladimir Tarasenko traded? And do the Blues counter with a big move? Just years ago, we were raving about how young the Blues core group of players was and how this team could be competing for a Stanley Shake Cup for hand. years to come. Well, that window has come to a close. And the Athletics' Jeremy Rutherford thinks it'll be sooner rather than later if this team stays the same. If this roster stays intact, um, they could remain there for a couple more years. The thing is, I, th I could see that window closing in just a couple years because a lot of these contracts that uh, they have, Braden Shen, Tory Krug, Justin Falk, Jordan Bennington, a lot of these guys are going to be in their mid-30s towards the tail end of these lengthy contracts. So, you know, I think definitely there's some pressure on this organization to win now. Mizzou football will have to do the same this season. The $64,000 question is, who will be the quarterback? The man behind me, Brady Cook, could be the front runner. The pride of Chaminade High School has size, speed, and a good arm. Brady, who will be our Sports Plus guest on Sunday night, is one of four candidates vying for the job. He also has already cut four different name, image, and likeness deals. I asked if it could be a problem in the locker room if some have deals and some don't. No, I do think that could be a distraction for some people. It hasn't been for our team. Um, and I mean, I think it's almost motivation for those guys that aren't getting them. Um, you know, you go out on Saturdays and perform, um, there's going to be companies knocking on your door that next week saying, hey, um, you know, endorse our product, you know, and influence for our brand. Um, so, you know, I see it kind of as motivation. And, um, you know, as much as our locker room can stay away from getting distracted by it, I think the better. Who are these amazing shooters? How did one gym assemble such a collection of kids who don't miss? It's the Bob McCormick Basketball Camp, the biggest in town, 180 campers this week, 1,200 per summer for the last 45 years. And they are having some fun. You know, we take all skill levels, so you don't have to be a superstar to come to the camp. Uh, one of the things we tell them is you got to listen and you got to learn all week and then make some friends along the way. What's your goal? Um, swishes. Are you better than the boys right now? Yes, definitely. Definitely? Yes. She is cute. And one bit of Cardinal news that you'll absolutely love. The Cardinals announced today that Yadier Molina will return to the team sometime in early August. And so that makes them eligible for that great record of most times one pitcher throwing to one catcher. Of course, Adam Wainwright to Yadier Molina. It would break the record of Mickey Lolich and Bill Freehand with Detroit. So they still have a chance for that spectacular record. And great your years. best guess, David Perron is gone? <sighs> Boy, if I had to guess right now, yes. I hope I'm completely wrong tomorrow by 11 o'clock, though. Yeah, a lot of people do. All right, Frank, thanks. Coming up, Barbie goes green. What the new doll is made of and the message that comes with it. Chances are you did some online shopping today. Amazon Prime Day kicked off today. Great deals on millions of items, many of the lowest prices so far this year. Retail experts say do not worry if you aren't ready to shop. More items will be marked down toward Labor Day and Black Friday. Sales end tomorrow night at midnight. Barbie is going green. Dr. Jane Goodall is being honored with her own doll this week. Part of Mattel's latest series paying tribute to female heroes. Jane Goodall was one of the world's top conservationists, known for studying the world of chimpanzees. The doll release is just in time for Thursday's World Chimpanzee Day. It's made of 90% recycled plastic and sends a message about curbing climate change. 
The company hopes its products and packaging are 100% recyclable by 2030. More science leaders they can emulate. Woohoo! All right, during the pandemic, Peloton couldn't keep its bikes in stock. Now the company is struggling to stay afloat. It will stop making its own equipment, which means its factories will close. As a result, about 600 people will lose their jobs. The company says one reason it is hurting is because of cheaper bike options from the competition. And there you have it, five on your side at 10. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon is next. Start your day with Today in St. Louis, bright and early, beginning at 4 a.m. And have a great tomorrow.